Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum number of operations to make array continuous. This is definitely a hard one, but it's not like a super long problem and it's all about how you approach the problem. So first let's understand it. We're given an integer array nums. In one operation, we can take any element in nums and replace it with any other integer. And nums is considered continuous if it meets this criteria, like these two bullet points. But I think it's even more simple. Like continuous pretty much means what it says it does. Like if we have one, two, three, and this is our entire array, this is continuous. If we had two, one, three, this is also continuous, even though the numbers are arranged in a different order. Because if you took this and sorted it, it would look like one, two, three. It's continuous because it starts at some number. It doesn't have to be one. For example, if we have three, four, five, this is also continuous. It starts at three, but then every other number after it in sorted order is just a plus one. Like three plus one is going to be four. Plus one is going to be five. Plus one, if we were to extend, this would be six. But if we had a seven, this is now not continuous. The order doesn't really matter, but the values themselves do. So when they say every number in the array has to be unique, well, yeah, that's kind of self-explanatory. If we had something like three, four, five, five, this is not continuous. Like we didn't jump by one this time. It didn't jump at all. So that's the problem. And also they give this second bullet point, which says the minimum and the maximum, the difference between those elements has to be the length of the array minus one. And if you look at these arrays, like these continuous ranges, you'll find that that's going to be true. And that's because if you took this, like it's kind of like the distance between these two is going to be two. That's the length minus one. So pretty much these bullet points are just kind of meant to confuse you. Like if you have that criteria that the min and max difference is going to be the length of the array minus one and not only that, but and every element has to be unique, then of course it's going to be a continuous range that looks like this. So that's the first thing to get out of the way. Then you might think, okay, let's take the input array and sort it. That's not a bad idea. And assume you get something that like looks like this, like one, two, three, five and six. Or maybe let's get rid of the six to make it a bit more simple for now. Your first idea, and I'll admit this was my first idea as well. You might think, can we just find the longest continuous range and we know that for the longest continuous range, we don't have to make any changes to this guy, do we? Like this is the continuous range of length three. And we have one element that kind of doesn't fall into this range. Like we can't really do anything with this element. We have to change it. And in this case, we have to change it to a four. So what I'm saying is maybe we can find the longest continuous range and then take the length of the entire array and then subtract from it the window that makes up the longest continuous range. You might think that does this work? Because that would be pretty easy. It'd be a pretty easy sliding window problem. And in this case, we'd get an answer of four minus three, which is one. We only need to replace one element to make the entire thing continuous. It worked for this example, but it doesn't work for every example because if we now take this and add a six to it, uh, once again, this is the longest continuous range. It's of length three. So what, what are we going to do? Take five minus three and get two. We have to replace two numbers. I mean, it technically works like we can make this a four and we can make this a five. But you probably saw the problem right now. Watch that in slow motion. Why would I make this five a four just to change this into a five, right? Why not just keep this as a five and replace this with a four? We really only need one replacement to make this thing a continuous range. So that's why finding the longest continuous window by itself is not going to work. And this is the part where you have to get a little bit creative. What I'm about to show you is not super complicated once you know it, but I'll admit it's not easy to come up with. But I'll try to explain a little bit of the intuition of how you might be able to do so. And I'll admit, like in a real interview, I would not expect you to be able to solve this problem by yourself. Like maybe you could like brainstorm some of the things I'm about to tell you and hopefully your interviewer would give you a hint. But I'll kind of talk about this. 
we realize now that if we actually have to figure out like what the replacements actually are, that's not easy. Like for us to know that leave the five the same, but change the six into a four, that's not really simple to figure out, is it? Okay, well, how do we then maybe even think of a brute force solution to this problem? Well, we know that the continuous range is going to be from some number x all the way up until like x plus n, let's say where n is the length, minus 1, right? x is just some number, and the difference between these two is going to be the length minus 1. We have no idea what x actually is, but we're pretty confident that it should be at least one of these numbers, right? Like, there's no way we're going to take every single one of these guys and replace them, is there? Like, why would we do that? We can at least keep one of them the same. The worst possible case would be we keep one the same and we change every single other element to come after that number, like two, three, four, five, right? That's a possibility. And we don't know for sure which element to necessarily keep the same. And we know we can't just find the longest continuous window as I showed earlier. So what we say is consider every single one of these guys as the x element. And if we do that, how do we find the solution? Well, a brute force solution would actually be n squared. We consider, let's say, 1 as the x value. So this is our x. And then we check, okay, x plus 1. Does this exist? And if this is our x, and let's say the length of this is 5, then the range we're looking for is 1 all the way to 1 plus 5 minus 1. So we're looking for the range from 1 to 5. This is the range that we're trying to build here. And how can we brute force this? Well, starting at 1, now we're going to check, does 2 exist in this set of numbers, we could loop over this or we could just convert this into a hash set to make it quicker. But we would check, does two exist? In this case, it does. Does a three exist? Yep, it does. Does four exist? No, it does not. Does five exist? Yes, it does. So it looks like four out of five elements of this range exist. For us to get the four, what would we have to do? We'd have to replace one of the other elements that did not fit into this range into a four. So basically, when we consider one to be the start of the range, then we find that we only need one replacement to solve this problem. And I could go through the other examples as well, like for two, we'd get two, three exists, four does not exist, so make that red, five exists, and actually six exists as well. So the other thing we could do is change the one into a four. That's also one replacement. Now, it's kind of obvious that if we start at three, we'll have multiple values that don't exist because I think for that, we'll need the range three to seven. And it looks like we have three, we have five, we have six, but we need to replace this into a four and probably this into a seven. So this is kind of a possible solution, right? It's not the most optimal. Don't necessarily go for the most optimal solution when you're starting out, but an N squared solution ain't half bad. Like if you could come up with this in a real interview, I'd be pretty impressed. Now, how do we take this? this solution and make it a little bit more optimal. And what we're going to need to do is the sliding window technique. Because as we kind of showed, like if we're starting here and then trying to like build the window, well, I kind of didn't show it like in the drawing because we were assuming we had a hash set for that, but we can use the fact that the array is sorted to our advantage. So considering the sliding window, what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to consider this as the start of our range. So we're trying to build the range one to five. We're going to have our left pointer here and we're going to have our right pointer starting here as well. And then we're going to keep shifting it now to here, now to here, now to here. At what point should we stop? A naive thing to do would be to stop at the right element. And in this example, it kind of works. Like, okay, this is our window. Like, this is the window we were uh, looking for. We were trying to build this range. This range should be of length five, but we have a window of length four. That tells us we would need one replacement. We'd take the length of like the entire original array, five minus the window length four. That tells us we need one replacement. Not bad, but what if the 
element, the end of the range actually didn't exist. Like what if this was actually a six? Let's try the same thing over again. We're still looking for this range one through five. We start here. This is where our left pointer is, our right pointer is here. Then it's here, then it's here. That's kind of weird. Five doesn't even exist. So this is our window and this actually includes a six. Six is not in this range though. So basically what I'm getting at, like the point I'm trying to make here is that it's easier for us to code this solution up if we actually made it so we don't stop the right pointer once we find the end of our range, which in this case is one five. We should stop the right pointer once it's one value past that value, the end of the range. Like we should stop it here because then we can assume everything before the right pointer is part of our window. And that not only works if the target element does not exist, but it also works like if we were to start at three here, like this is our left pointer, we're looking for the range three to seven. And we know, of course, seven doesn't exist. In that case, we'd get our right pointer here, our right pointer here, and then out of bounds. So that's why we're kind of doing it this way. We're stopping our right pointer once it goes past this value or it goes out of bounds. So then we can assume everything before the right pointer is actually a part of the window. And when you do it this way, notice how our left pointer was here, our right pointer for five went one past that, now it's over here. So this is the window we get where our left value is one. Now we want to shift our left pointer by one over here. So now we want, starting from two, the window. We want the range now two to six. Now, what we were kind of doing before was similar to nested for loops, but why should we take our right pointer and reset it all the way back here? Because if one needed the right pointer all the way over here, there's no way the two is going to want the right pointer to the left of this, because if it didn't even work for this guy, it's not going to work for two, which is greater than one. So that's kind of why the sliding window works here. Now, it's not easy to come up with, that's for sure, but it does work. So now that our right pointer is here, we want to actually shift it one more time here because we don't want to stop at the right of the range. We want to stop after it. So our right pointer is going to be here. This is going to be the window. Once again, it's length four. So we take uh, the entire length five minus four, and then we say one replacement. We're trying to minimize the number of replacements so we can initialize the number of replacements to like infinity if we wanted to, or we could initialize it to like the original length of the input array because we know we're not going to need more replacements than every single value in the input. There's one last point I want to make, a couple points actually. First of all, the sliding window here is going to be an O of N solution, but remember we do have to sort the input array before we do that. So the time complexity is actually going to be n log n. There's one other thing I want to mention to you. What would happen if we had duplicates in the input array? Let's take a look. Suppose this six was actually a five. What would happen then? First of all, we're looking for the range one five. Once again, our left pointer is here. Our right pointer would be here, then here, then here. Remember, we want to go one past the right value five, which is the right value of this range. So we're going to shift this one more time and it's the same value. So now we're going to shift it one more time. Okay, now we are past that. But the problem here is that we assumed that our window for every value in our window, it included a value in the range. And technically that's true. All of these values do fit in the range, but they're not all unique. We double counted the five. So this actually does not form a continuous range. We don't want to double count the values. That's a problem. So for us to solve this problem optimally with this sliding window, we have to eliminate the duplicates, even if that shortens the length of this array because it will still work. Like let's say this was a five and we just eliminated the duplicates and sorted the array, then we'd have an array of length four. It does still work as long as when we're calculating the solution, like we are finding our window, our left pointer is here, our right pointer is out of bounds. That means our window is of length four. Now when we're calculating the number of operations that we'd have to do to make this continuous, we take the original length of the array, which remember was five. 
before we eliminated the duplicate. So we'd have to take the original length minus the size of the window, which would be one. So those are all the points I wanted to make. I know it's a lot to understand. That's why I think, in my opinion, the n squared solution really isn't half bad, but I know you guys like the most optimal solutions. So n log n is what I'm gonna be coding up right now. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is get the original length of the array, which is pretty easy to do. And of course, I'm doing that because what we're going to do now is take nums and convert it into a hash set. The reason we're doing that is to eliminate the duplicates. And then we're going to sort this. And I know we're taking a hash set and sorting it, but it's pretty much equivalent to an array the way it's used in Python. So that's why we can kind of get away with it. And lastly, we're going to initialize our result, which I think you could also like set to float infinity, but the original length of the array is also perfectly valid because it's not going to be any greater than that. That's for sure. So then we can say the result is what we're going to return. Okay. Now to actually calculate the result, we're going to need two pointers for our sliding window. Usually for sliding windows, we have our right pointer iterating over every position in the input array. But in this case, we're actually doing the opposite. We're considering every value as the left value of our range. And we're going to have a right pointer, which is initially going to be set to zero, but we're going to try to shift it as far right as we possibly can. So how do we know we can shift the right pointer by one? That's what we're doing in this loop. We're going to be shifting the right pointer by one. Do you remember the condition? Basically, if the value at the right pointer is less than the right of the range that we're trying to calculate. Remember, our range is going to be nums of left all the way up until nums of left plus the length minus one. This is our range. So we want, though, the right pointer to not be at this value. We want it to be one past that. So while nums of right is less than nums of left plus the length, while it's less than that, we're going to increment this because if we were to add a minus one here, then that would mean we might stop at the right value of the range. But we don't want to do that. We want to stop to the right of that value. I know the way I'm wording this is kind of confusing, but this is the right of the range and we want to go past that. So that's why we remove this minus one here. And now, by the time this loop is complete, we will know the right pointer is there. It could be out of bounds, though. So we actually do need to add one more condition here before we even try to check this because we might increment it so much that it goes out of bounds. Let's ensure that right is less than the length of nums. And this is also true. But even after this loop is done executing, right could be out of bounds. That's OK. We would take the window length, which we're going to get with right minus left plus one. At least that's how you usually do it, right? Usually to get the length of the window, we say right minus left plus one. But remember, this time the right pointer is not actually inclusive of our window because it could be out of bounds and it could be greater than this value. This time we don't need the plus one. So we get rid of that here and then we can potentially reassign the result, which is always going to be minimized to either itself or the not the window length, that is kind of a naive thing to do, but remember we're taking the original length minus the window length. I know this is not a lot of code, but let's be honest, this is pretty complicated. So don't feel bad if you weren't able to come up with it yourself, but now let's go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.